So now for the second question, part A, we are given that on an Ergen diagram, shade the region whose points represent complex number Z, satisfying these inequalities. This is the first inequality, which is called as half line. And this is the second inequality, which is nothing but a straight line on real axis at value three. And we have to shade everything that is left of that. So this is nothing hard to draw. But when it comes to this, again, this is not difficult if you know the concept of half line. So what is half line? Let's say that this is a complete line. It starts from like, you know, negative infinity, goes to the positive infinity, it never stops. Half line concept is actually a line that starts from a particular point, let's say somewhere over here. And then with respect to the reference line, which is called actually the line that is on the positive X axis side, if you want to call that. Now with respect to this line, what's the inclination of that particular line? At what angle is it situated above or below? If you are going in the anti-clockwise direction, the angle is positive. If you are going in the clockwise angle, this is negative. So obviously we can say that there is no line and the negative side. It must mean the positive side. So that's the angle that is represented by the number that is written over here or over here. And the starting point is represented over here, where minus is to be coming out in the common. And I'll tell you how you can find out the starting point. And everything that is apart from that is going to be cancelled out. So this line is gone and we are left with only the half line. There is no other part, only this part. And with respect to the reference line, what's the inclination at which it's situated? So that's the kind of logic that we need to follow over here to draw the inequality for that half line. How do you find out the starting point of the uh, half line? We make minus as the common of this uh, point and that will become your reference point. So now because we are having the argument of Z and because we want minus out in the common, let me just write square bracket into which I need to write this one and two in such a way that when I open these brackets, it becomes minus one minus two I. So minus one, minus of minus will become plus. So I need to write plus. So minus plus becomes minus. So now that's my starting point, one plus two I. Because now if you open this bracket, it becomes Z minus one minus two I. That's exactly what we wanted. So one plus two I is your starting point. So what is one plus two I? How can I represent this on an Ergen diagram? So for that, let's draw our axis of the complex plane. Let me draw somewhere over here. Now you can just have a, either you can draw it with the help of scaling. You can draw it not to scale. I'll be drawing not to scale over here, not to scale. Because the scaling that I'm using is approximately like, you know, it's not exact thing. So let's say that this is your one. This is your two. This is your three. This is your four. This is your phi, so on and so forth. Okay, just keep on marking this approximately at equal lengths. And that's your real axis. Over here, that's your imaginary axis. So over here, let's say this is your i. And this will be your 2i. This will be your approximately 3i. So, so on and so forth, you can just simply, like, you know, draw this quickly. And for the negative side also, we can have this at the same distance, okay? At approximately the same distance. Somewhere over here, let's say it's negative i. Then over here, it's negative 2i, negative 3i, negative 4i. And yeah, that's about the complex axis. What's the starting point? On the real, it's one. On the imaginary, it's two i. So one and two i stands over here. So that's my starting point. Now I have to draw a reference point over here with respect to this x-axis, positive x-axis, I should say. And now I have to draw a line that is at angle pi by three. How can I convert that pi by three into degrees so that I, I get a sense of what we are drawing, on what angle we are drawing, because we know that this is 90 degrees. So somewhere in between zero to 90 must be this angle, right? So something like that you can think about and come to a conclusion. So what is the way through which you can convert a radians into degrees? So if it's pi by three, basically in, I mean in degrees, there are no pi. So to get rid of this, we divide this thing with pi. Now what is equal to pi in degrees? It's 180. So you do 180 by pi. So that's how you simply get rid of this pi's and 180 by three is 60 degrees. So now I have to draw a half line that's situated, one is at minus 60 degrees, one is at positive 60 degrees. So roughly, if I want to draw this kind of lines, so let's say that this is 60, 
for example and this is at minus 60 and this this angles should represent approximately same stuff right so something like this i guess represents same stuff yes it this this i guess this thing's good again it's not to scale so you just have to be a quite like you know quite like you know in visually appearance should be having similar kind of angle as you can see okay, this angle should look that it's equal to that so yeah i guess we are done over here and we can just label this kind of uh, inequalities or the half lines that we have drawn first of all so this is what this is argument of said minus 1 minus 2 i is equals to pi by 3 and this is argument of z minus 1 minus 2i equals to negative pi by 3. Why negative pi by 3? Because this is coming in the clockwise direction. And this is positive because it's going in the anti-clockwise direction. So the first inequality says that the argument of that is trapped between minus 60 degrees to positive 60 degrees. So we have to simply shade everything that lies below this two half lines. Now, what about the second? I told you it's nothing but on the real axis, where is the value 3? That's where I have to draw the line that no matter whatever is the imaginary value, your real value stays at 3. So it's nothing but a straight line that we have to draw at real value of z is equal to 3. So something like this is what you can expect. Something like this. And I can just adjust this somewhere like this. Yes. Now we have to draw everything. Like we have to shade everything that is left of this line to complete this inequality. So now what's the common point? What's the common point of shading region? So for the half lines, it's in between. For this, it's to the left. So that triangle that is forming is actually the area of interest. And that becomes your shaded region as per the need of the question. That's what we have to shade. So I hope that this question has made some sense. And now just to give a complete understanding of what's happening, we are going to represent any complex number z. Now see, if I have to relate this complex uh, or organ plane with respect to the Cartesian plane, any point x, y is just similar or ident like, you know, identical to any complex number z, which is defined by, let's say, a plus bi. So a comma bi is nothing but a complex number z or x comma yi, if you want to say that. So now how do we represent a coordinate in an Argon plane? We always have a reference point that starts from the origin. So now anything that is within the shaded region, including this kind of lines, because if you notice, these lines are actually included into the shading part because of this less than equal to signs everywhere. If it was just less than sign, then we would not include these lines. Only the shading part would be somewhere where our Z is lying. So now because uh, on the lines also it's uh, possible, the values of Z could be anywhere on these lines or anywhere in between them as well, okay? The reference point should not change. That's the mistake that I've done. It should stay fixed on the origin. And now this could change anywhere. That Z is anywhere uh, where you can just uh, think of inside this shaded region. So let's say that's the end of this first part over here. And let's say that this, this is where we are drawing that Z to just represent it. It's not compulsory to draw it. But yeah, if you want for the completeness, that's your Z. So yeah, that's the end of the first part. And I hope that you have understood this question in a proper way because I have seen a lot of people struggle with this kind of questions where it's very simple if you know the concepts. Now, let's move on to the second part and understand how to do that. So now it's given that calculate the least value of argument of Z for the points in the region. So basically this is the shaded region. From it, where do we get the least value of argument of the complex number Z? You have to give our answers in radians, correct to three decimal places. So first of all, let me get rid of this Z that we had drawn. Okay, I'll just get rid of it very quickly. And also the part that is on the left. Okay. So now how can we get that Z on which the argument of that complex number is minimum? What is the meaning of the argument of Z? So anywhere on this kind of diagram, if I'm having a line, what is the argument of that line? So argument of that line is nothing but the angle with respect to the positive x-axis, with respect to wherever is the line, that angle becomes the argument of z. So simply we have to understand where will be that minimum angle starting from, let's say, this point until the maximum value, as I can see, is going to that point. 
So obviously, because this is the minimum value that we are having, and this angle also, as we can see, is a minimum angle as compared to anywhere. If you just if you just rotate this kind of uh, uh, arrow anywhere in the shaded region, where do you think is the minimum angle with respect to this x-axis? Just think about it in your own ways. You can just take your time. But I can clearly see that it's going to be over here when the z value will be at that point where x value is clearly 3. We don't know what's the y value. That's something that we'll have to figure out. But yeah, that's the place where this angle will be minimum as compared to anywhere you will put that z arrow anywhere. That angle would be always greater as compared to this one. So now, if I'm trying to draw that angle over here, let's say that this is theta, that theta represents the least value of argument of z. So let me just denote that, that theta is equals to least argument of z. Then how can you find out that theta? If I just try to draw that triangle roughly outside over here, okay, we know that this length is three. We don't know what's this length. And now that's the theta that we have to find. That's the question. So if we are able to find what's this side, our task is done. Then we can just use uh, 10 of opposite uh, over adjacent to find the theta. But how do you find that length? That's the main question. So now there are multiple ways to tackle this. And because as you can see, it's of only two marks, it basically asks you to use this diagram in some ways to find that length. And that takes a lot of practice, even though it's of only two marks. And if you're not having good enough observation skills to do this kind of questions, then you will require good amount of practice to master these kind of things. And let's say that even after doing practice, maybe at some point you are stuck at this question that you are not really able to figure out what's this length. Then you can convert these equations of Argon diagrams into the Cartesian equations. And then you can simply find like, you know what, for, for example, if we have to find this coordinate, what's the Y value when X value is equal to three, you can do that. So how do you convert this uh, equation into the straight line equation? I'll tell that in a while. But that's not something that we'll be using to solve this. I'll leave that to you if you want to do that. I'll explain that in some other question in a proper way where it's really required, where we cannot solve it straight away. And it requires this kind of conversion from complex plane to an uh, like you know this Cartesian plane. But for now, I can do it very quickly. I know that because this is an isosceles triangle, because this triangle is divided exactly into the between because this is 60 degrees and this is negative 60 degrees. So both of them in itself are 60 degrees. I know that for a fact. So now I also know that this length, let's say that this length is marked by L. If this is L, this must also be L. And now if you can notice from this point to this point, because I know that this axis is like, you know, having the value of two. So from the X axis to that, the length is two. This length is 2. So from the whole L, if I take away 2, I'll be getting this side. So that's the kind of logic that we are using over here to find out what's that unknown side. Let's say, let's just call it Y for now. So Y will be equal to L minus 2. How can we find this L? We can find that L with this about triangle. Because over here also, you can see it's a 90 degrees that's being formed. I know that this angle is pi by 3. This angle is pi by 3. I know that this side, the side over here is also a value that I can clearly find out with a logic that this, this point is at x equal to three. This point is at x equal to one. So three minus one is two. So this length is two. If I have to draw this triangle over here, this is pi by three, this is two, and this is L. So how can you find out this L? We are having opposite, we are having adjacent. So we can use make of 10. So I can just write it over here itself. Uh, that 10 of pi by three is equals to L by two. And therefore L becomes two ten pi by three. So now what's the value of that Y? Therefore, oops, yeah. Therefore Y becomes L minus, L is basically two ten pi by three. So 2, 10 pi by 3 minus that 2, right? Y is what? L minus 2. So this is L minus 2. And yeah, that's your Y. If you convert this with the help of your Kelsey, 
make sure that your Kelsey is in radiant modes. And if you solve 210 pi by 3 in your Kelsey, it comes out to be 2 root 3. So this is 2 root 3 minus 2. So 2 root 3 minus 2 is the opposite. Adjacent is 3. How can you find theta? Again, you can make a use of 10. So therefore, the final value of theta will be 10 inverse, 10 inverse of opposite 2 root 3 minus 2 over adjacent, which is 3. And now this comes out to be, so 2 root 3 minus 2, and if I divide that by 3 and do 10 inverse of that, the value comes out to be 0 0.454 correct to 3 decimal place. But now one thing that you need to keep in mind that we are traveling in the clockwise direction. And the clockwise direction indicates a negative sign. And that's the reason why we are having negative in this answer. And yeah, that's that becomes your final answer of part B of question two. Now I told you that I'll tell you a trick of how you can convert this into the Cartesian equation. But I think that it would be great that if I just uh, like, you know, leave it as of now and continue that kind of thing in some different paper. And I, I guess that would be a better way. If you want as a part of homework, you can literally research that how can I make a use of gradient I know that the gradient formula is m is equals to 10 theta and you already know what is this theta and you know that the gradient will be negative so 1060 with the negative sign becomes your gradient so y equals to my uh, whatever is the answer of gradient x plus c you also know that 1 comma 2 lies on this line then you can also find c right but yeah that's something that i'll talk about in the next uh, i mean the next particular time when we have this kind of questions but yeah for now uh, we are done with part B as well, and that will be our final answer of this question.